So uh, here's the Qualcomm. Uh, Qualcomm 11 AD. 11 AD. This is uh, the fastest Wi-Fi ever. Fast it's a new. This new Wi-Fi solution over 60 gigahertz, right? Correct. So here you're doing a speed test? Mm, this is a speed test. It costs 2 gigabit per second TCP IP data. This is awesome. So there's an access point just nearby. It's an access point which is actually from conveniency behind the wall. It's How's the normal Wi-Fi speed? It crosses almost get to 3 gigabit per second. What is the normal Wi-Fi speed? Uh, depending. BGN is uh, like 30, 40 megabit per second. Uh, 11 AC can reach up to 300, 400, depending on the uh, actual uh, congestion in the air. If it doesn't have any congestion there. So that's 10 times faster. It's 10 times faster in general, yes. 10 times faster, and what do you mean congestion? Okay, congestion when you have multiple clients. Uh, 11 AD is not su supposed to basically have any influence because it's using beamforming. Uh, info is basically targeting two antennas together, training the link, oh. like 11 AC, which is basically omnidirectional. So it's, it implies on CSMS CA, which is basically using uh, a silence period between any attempt to transmit. So it's a different technology, it's a different way that And it's right here in the low TV. So, uh, this is Snapdragon uh, this is 820. Commercial, this is the first commercial. Uh, Phone that integrated YG 11 AD. And are you connecting to this uh, baseband? Honestly, uh, docking to this uh, AD? Uh, docking station, it's called docking, where you can Isn't have, it? You can have uh, dongles, USB devices, internet, the HDMI. It's amazing. Yeah, HDMI. It's like a docking station over wireless. So, uh, so it's USB 3 speed? It's, uh, this, this is all the USB ports. Particularly, I'm not, I'm not sure what is the uh, dongle, but it can support up to USB 3. So that means super fast bandwidth, hard drive, wireless to the phone. And they're all, they're all basically uh, transferred through this wireless connectivity. It's all like here. It's all like a cable replacement technology. So, you so like you're connecting bandwidth. the keyboard and mouse wirelessly. So this is Bluetooth to this, and this, then this one goes this one exports, AD. Export all the USB peripherals to the phone. And this is called Android Docking. Android Phone Docking to an Android uh, Docking Station. That's amazing. But it's so, over wireless. So you can ha be how far can you be with a phone? So once again, uh, there's meters, tens of meters uh, to get the best bandwidth. How, ma how many meters? Generally speaking, and the way that they implemented that particular phone, it's tens of tens of meters. You can still sustain gigs per second. But if you take like uh, radio arrays, which basically increases the gain, you can achieve like even hundreds of hundreds of meters of distance and still sustain gigs per second. How does it uh, perform with walls? Good question. Uh, it doesn't penetrate concrete, but it bounces from concrete. But it doesn't penetrate the human body, like water or some, you know, it's like the millimeter or short millimeter wave uh, uh, physical characteristics. But if you're in line of sight, if you are, it can be uh, sort of like be able to create a pass which is even bounces from wall, then you will be okay. So uh, the AD is best to be in the same room? AD is sort of like an in-room technology, in conference room technology, uh, in living room technology. Uh, it, is, uh, it can basically coexist with 11AC. You can do like uh, redundancy between the fast link using uh, FST. So you, you can basically combine the two technologies together. Combine like a... like an FST fast session transfer. And that's part of the Android firmware, or how would you support uh, that? Yes, it's part of the Linux standard team driver. It can allow you to select the fastest link according to availability. Nice. If you disconnected from 11 AD, yeah. you'll be able to basically still sustain this. this and this is this through bonding. It's called bonding. This looks like a very nice big phone. Uh, how's the power uh, uh, consumption for AD? Is it, okay. is it okay. compared to Wi-Fi? So, I, uh, uh, I don't want to mislead you because I'm currently on, on that part. I'm more like covering the software side, but it's very optimized for phones. This power chipset is supposed to be very optimized for phones. It's a matter of like idle mode versus you know full capacity. I'm not sure what, what are the exact number. I don't want to mislead you. But so we're talking about multi gigabit. Wireless connectivity is completely amazing with docks, 
and with the uh, with base stations with regular like regular Wi-Fi. Docking station is an example of station. Yeah. Media, uh, you know, point to point between tablets to pop it out files. There's a lot of applications. We also support there's a tribe and that's this point. Yeah. And, uh, uh, already it is commercial, so you can use those devices to access to the internet. Uh, there's many, many, many applications. Uh, and there's not going to be any interfering. In, there's no interference, and uh, if we get in here, this is a 4K, 4K of 80. Yes, this is definitely an example for the 4K movie. We, uh, this is the where? And the dongle is connected to the TV and allows you to basically move a mirror all the data from the phone. So there's a dongle somewhere? There's a dongle, HDMI, and then. So how far is AD from a... Uh, Basically this phone is coming out, right? So once again, it's already it's already commercial, it was already announced, it's ready to go to the market. So the exact release date, but it's already a commercial device. And the, all the future uh, Wi-Fi routers are just going to have AD also, maybe? So we already have commercial devices. <laughs> Device. You can take a device, you can connect over 11 AD, you can redundant to 11 AC, and you can create a full connectivity, very fast and efficient connectivity. So, you new, uh, and you talk about interoperability? Interoperability means that we are supporting, uh, we are fully ratified and compliant with the spec, and we can do interoperability. There's one of the demos. That, uh, we are showing uh, Intel Intel tablet, and we are establishing point-to-point connections between Intel, and we are copying large files. So interoperability is basically between different vendors. Uh, we work with different vendors. We go to Flatfest, etc., etc., to make sure that our standard is completely compliant to, to the spec. Uh, what's, what could happen in the future? So, uh, it's be currently, fast. yes, so we're going to be basically uh, support uh, higher fire rates, which up to 7 gigabit per second. Um, for, uh, uh, you know, the time being, uh, we are currently, uh, uh, set, you know, set, settling on MCS-12, which is uh, 96 uh, gigabit per second fire speed. And yes, but, uh, you know, you have like huge, Huge channel wide, which you can eventually utilize, just you know, change the modulations and support further and further uh, uh, amount of data that you can carry on the same uh, unlicensed channel, uh, which is with wide uh, range and with the ability to basically to migrate to newer and higher speeds. And, uh, and all this uh, the transfer bandwidth is being processed on the SOC. Right. And how's your performance so, compared to Intel? Are you as, so as, think, as fast? I think that uh, Qualcomm is supposed uh, to lead and basically being the first to have commercial devices in the market. From a maturity point of view, I think that you know you saw the 2.6 gigabit per yeah. second display. on a smartphone. Uh, that, uh, Qualcomm, Qualcomm uh, currently definitely leading uh, uh, technology. From you know maturity, stability, and also. This is faster than uh, USB. It's almost in the speed of like uh, PCIe, and uh, it, oh, it's faster. It's faster. Faster than, than the USB Type C. Almost twice, twice as faster effectively than the USB Type C. It's still right. a very fast technology. From the high speed, it's even you know the bottleneck is uh, uh, the, uh, the interface is not not the physical uh, layer itself. And you say it's not. It's not going inside. Uh, it doesn't harm people. So, so there's not going to be any like uh, danger in this technology. It's, it's definitely. I think I'm not sure about research exactly has been done, but it doesn't supposed to be absorbed by the body, by the human body. It doesn't penetrate the human body, like the five, for instance. So it just you know doesn't penetrate water. So it doesn't supposed to do any harm. There's no. Uh, uh, um, Either you know from you know radiation point of view there shouldn't be any effect. Like uh, does it get hot the device? No, no, it doesn't. 
like it, like if you'd feel like uh, you know you'll, you'll hold the phone next to your ear, you'll probably feel that it gets heated, or your body or your ear is supposed to basically get heated. There's no such effect in the uh, 60 gigas because it doesn't penetrate any uh, human body or something. So. so it does get hot a little bit because there's a lot of bandwidth going on. There's a lot of transfer bits. So the yes, SOC heats up a little bit. Once again, it's, there's not supposed yeah. to influence on any human body. or. Nice. So.